what is up we're here for another episode of rap talk let's get straight into it it's a series on my channel where i talk about the culture in a compacted 20 minute segment so let's go jay-z finally answered the million not the million dollar the five hundred thousand dollar question dinner with jay-z or five hundred thousand dollars for years this debate has been going on on uh twitter social media people have been wanting to know if you could have dinner with Jay-Z or you could have $500,000. Now, the debate was like, you could learn a lot from Jay-Z. He has a lot of gems to give you. Um, things like that. Like, you know, it his time and his advice would be more valuable than $500,000. And people were just like, we'll take the money. So, Jay-Z sat down with Gail King. It's an interview that's coming out this Thursday, Friday. And so she asked this question. She says, you know, what would you suggest people do? And he's like, take the money. And what I found so pr profound about what he said was that he said, look, the, the game is in the blueprint. Henceforth, there's a series of albums called The Blueprint, The 444. He talks about how how he became successful. He's already giving you the tools. All you need to do is pay $10.99, buy the album, listen to it, and have your $500,000, hypothetically speaking, of course. But I'm happy that this debate is settled because, like, it's like, bro, like, what? Like, for $500,000, like... What you about to tell me that is not already, there's nothing new under the sun. When it comes to like advice, especially from like rappers and everything, like what, what really, what new information are they going to tell you? And the advice that Jay-Z is probably going to give you is probably not applicable, applicable. It probably don't apply to you. You know what I mean? It probably don't apply to you anyway. So, but yeah. And also, shout out to Gail King for being very in tune with the culture or her team. Just being very in tune with the culture and what's been going on. So, I think this is going to be a very good interview and I'm really excited to watch the entire thing. Awesome snippet. So, as I talked about last week, the City Girls Raw album was released last week. They had about two features and it was a pretty solid, you know, regular tape. Regular album, not regular album, but it was a pretty good album. Um, a nice body of work by both the City Girls. This is their third album, right? And so I was a little bit surprised by the charting because it in the sales because it only did six to seven thousand units versus their Girl Code album, which came out in 2018. But at that time, they were on the act up train and hype and everything and free JT and everything. So and, and in my feelings, so they were in that era. So it was a different time. However, that sold 200,000 units. And it's just like, dang, like, you know. That's a big jump. That's a big d decline jump. But I think there's a few reasons why on this, why this album didn't do well. I feel as though the promo, I feel like the promo was in a sense kind of rushed. I feel like now they're doing the promo after the album has came out or like they did it so close. Like there was no build up. There was no incentive on why we should be listening to the album. Like it just it just didn't the marketing and the rollout in my opinion just didn't make sense and there was this video of the ladies doing a press run and they have this single with kim petras called flashy and it's a cute song but i wish that it was released in the summertime because it's like it's winter and we're like on to like different vibes but tiktok is amazing so the song could do well we don't know however in the video, it's they're they're at I believe a radio station and they're playing the song and JT's a bit more hype and Carisha has low energy, and I've seen a lot of critiques and comments like oh da 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 da, and I'm just like here's my opinion on why the dynamic between the city girls in that video appeared that way. These are just assumptions. Carisha herself didn't tell me this. JT herself didn't tell me this. It's just it's just assumptions, okay? Um. Carisha's tired. She's a mom. She's an artist. She's a podcast host. She's an influencer. She's carried the city girls on her back for years because of JT being locked up. And JT and Carisha probably just want different things. They're clearly doing different things. Miami doesn't do that many features, but she's into podcasting. She's into influencing. She's with Diddy. Like she's enjoying herself. And then they have kind of different aesthetics. Carisha kind of caters to the hood 
or like the urban er crowd. I feel like JT is trying to expand a little bit. She's a bit more alternative. And I think that's kind of like a little bit of influence from Lil Uzi in a sense too. But it's okay to diversify and, you know, satisfy different demographics. You want to be as versatile as possible, especially if you're an artist, content creator, whoever, whatever. JT is trying to make up for lost times. Maybe she wants Carisha to kind of take a little bit of a, of a, a step back a little bit important to other things that she wants to do and initially in all the interviews that the city girls have done jt was like the one that wanted to be the rapper carisha didn't want to necessarily be a rapper but she did it because jt asked her and she just you know went along for the ride and ended up finding success in it and branching on into other things as far as this album I just wish that it was promoted better. I wish that there was some like build up, lead up. Like there wasn't really like the singles like were so spaced out. Like Pinata, I believe that was like a snippet and then it came out. And I don't know. It's just something off about this rollout. And in a in a way, it makes me feel like this could be the last album that we'll get for the city girls and another thing is that there is like a theory in like music or music industry it proposes that every third album in a row in the same style by an artist will either be poorly received by the public or not as good as the first two it may have been good but people weren't really gravitating to it and speaking of more people on the quality control roster, let's talk about Offset and his album Set It Off. It debuted at number five on the Billboard 200 selling 70K units in the first week. Unfortunately, Takeoff did pass away. And so that left Quavo and Takeoff by themselves, right? And then Offset kind of did his own thing and there was like this beef and there was this and there was that. It was a lot of controversy. And then it was the Nicki Minaj and the Kenneth Petty. It was so much going on in that whole circle or whatever. But what I will say is that that kind of was like a build up to Offset's album in a sense and his rollout, you know? It was really him establishing himself as a solo artist because believe it or not, like, the Migos are all, they were all great, but solo individually, they were strong. And to come from a group and be like a solo artist and actually like find success in it and be a, because believe it or not, Offset is a very likable person and his press one was great. He went with uh, Bobby, he, he went on Bobby's, that white ladies uh, podcast. And then he was on like Vanity Fair or like Vogue or something doing his skincare routine. And then he just did like, um, what's in my bag? And he kind of is diversifying his, where he is. He's like increasing his visibility amongst the masses. And I feel like that's kind of how you do it and set it apart. And kind of going back a little bit with the city girls, I genuinely see JT going solo. JT has it to be solo. So next, Megan Thee Stallion and 1501 finally part ways and they have reached a settlement agreement. This is a big win for Meg and I talked about it in my last video where she did talk about this album being fully funded and I'm really excited to see what is in store for Megan in this era in her life. I think that she's going to come hard. She's going to come hard regardless and I'm and I'm so excited. I feel like I'm talking about a lot of women rappers, so I'm going to switch it up. <laughs> so Wale signs with Def Jam. Was this a bad move? What did you think? I don't think this is a bad move. I think that Wale signed with Def Jam because of the CEO. His name is Tunji Belogan, and then Wale is Nigerian. So maybe that Nigerian connection um, made him work and iron out a deal that is good for him. Him having this connection, just my assumption, I feel like this is going to be what he needs to thrive as an artist. And if he has someone on his team that's like understanding of his goals, I think that, you know, this is a great partnership and a smart move. Wale has been super, super quiet. And in my opinion, Wale not necessarily complains, but he goes on a lot of rants about the music industry and his career and, and things like that, which is valid. And, you know, you could feel however you want to feel, but... I feel like it really like took away from him as an artist. Like, believe it or not, Wale is a DC, PG County, DMV, national treasure. He really put on. He is like the only rapper that has a feature with Lady Gaga. That's not a, that's a, that's a, Lady Gaga is a big pop star, a, a Grammy 
a Grammy and Oscar winner, I believe. Just him signing to MMG and just like never forgetting his sound and never like he always stamped the DMV, which I always appreciate him for that, right? I think this hiatus that he went on to was well needed. I feel like he, he looks more refreshed. I know the music is going to be good, especially with this new single and freaking music video max julian i think it was really good and then in a carousel instagram post he did announce that he would be releasing an album soon and i'm just excited to see i'm excited to see what wale is what this new era of wale is gonna sound like i'm i want to i want to hear the bars i want to hear the storytelling i want to hear what wale has to say and the art that he's gonna give to us i'm so excited so much so much rapper news <laughs> so last but not least um well, actually not last but not least but i seen a comment about Nicki minaj being very repetitive and it was a all the parties drake featuring chief keef remix called for all the barbs remix and so when i was on a rap alert and i seen this comment i was just like i disagree Nicki minaj is, is an artist that knows how to stay current with the times Whatever artist that she's on the track with, she has a way of adapting to their style, but still giving that Nicki Minaj oomph. Nicki Minaj has had a lot of longe longevity in her career, and literally everyone is hyped for Pink Friday too. And that's just that's just a testament on her artistry and who she is. She makes good music. And you have to understand that some things may sound repetitive competitive to you but you have to fully like appreciate someone's discography and she really pushes her pen so I don't think that she sounds repetitive I just think that she's staying relevant and current with the times she has to understand that she has a younger audience and a new audience so she's going to have to adapt in certain areas but to say that someone sounds the same is like an opinion like you have to listen to like you have to really listen and study someone's discography before you say everything sounds the same. Everything that you probably listen and gravitate to and the same styles of songs, you could be listening to those same styles of songs, but that lady has a big catalog. And I did like For All The Barbs. I feel like it was like, I feel like she should have been featured on it. Like I'm missing my Drake and Nicki feature. Like I, let me feel like it's 2010 again. Like, come on. Last but not least, I was very surprised to hear this, but TikTok and Billboard will be launching a partnership and they have launched TikTok Billboard top 50 charts. Am I surprised? Absolutely not. People have to understand that the landscape of music is changing and how we as consumers listen to music and consume just content as a, as a whole it's different meaning that we're not buying albums anymore we're not going we're not buying singles anymore some people will buy singles if they really like their artists but we really stream we're on youtube we're on spotify we're on apple music we're on amazon music and so i knew this was coming because a lot of the music that we like and listen to it comes from the snippets on tiktok we like and we fall in love with those snippets and then like the artist builds that hype and it could be like an unknown artist too. They build that hype and then you end up liking a song and boom, they create more songs to build up to that hype. And they have that like one little line, right? And just one little line could be a TikTok trend, could be a transition, could be a, in a fan cam edit. Like for example, um, it was that song. And I don't want to say, baby, why can't you me? I'm going to insert it here, right? But it kind of showed like... Um, the little transition from like your glow up right and then during the pandemic it was i'm just a kid um copyright reasons i can't put it in but it's basically showing like how you are with your family from when you were a kid to like you know that and then you had the bus it challenge like that's that that snippet that 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 15 second bridge I sh there are no bridges in songs no more but that little snippet could really change someone's life and so just to read more about this merger new partnership that launched september 14th i know late but it's still important um so this is the TikTok Billboard Top 50 charts. It's a new weekly chart compromised of the most popular songs on the platform in the US. The TikTok Billboard Top 50 chart is available to all users on TikTok.
and billboard.com. So um, this is the first official chart in the US to monitor music discovery and engagement on the platform. It is, it's, it is a verified list of the hottest songs on TikTok each week, giving the most accurate record of current music trends, what's happening in the US market. The chart is based on a combination of creations, video views, user engagement by the TikTok, US TikTok community and will be released weekly on Thursdays. I'm not surprised by this because the way we, the landscape of music and way we, the way we consume music is different. It's changing. We're not listening to music that much anymore, that long. Like songs have been, songs were three minutes at one point. Now songs are like two minutes and 40 seconds. And after the good part that everyone knows on TikTok, it's like, it's like we have the attention spans of squirrels. And I am one, I am guilty of that. I'm, I, I just don't have it in me sometimes to listen to it. Like one thing I noticed is that people do not watch my videos all the way through. Yeah, stop at the three minute mark. So I must be doing something wrong, but that's the size of the point. I feel like this is a great partnership business wise, but what suffers truly is artists and music because now it's just popular songs that are gonna be pushed, not actual art or not art, not necessarily art, but not actual like real quality good music. It's just what's hot. It's not quality. And that's kind of what we're getting from. How many hits you got? How many followers you got? Um, is your stuff going viral? How many people are using your sound? People have to understand that TikTok is just a wave. Like, them TikTok DJs be mixing the old songs and the new songs. Like, they be putting Sexy Red. They be putting... I know Keith Sweat tired of us because we be mixing the rap songs, the Megan songs with Keith Sweat. Like, it's a lot. So, I didn't... I seen this coming. And honestly, hey, you kind of just got to adapt with the times. Either you're going to be mad or you just... You're just not going to listen to music. But... Yeah, anyways, that concludes this episode of Rap Talk, and until next time, bye!